For a long time now, I've been pondering how to manage my growing inventory of external hard drives. I didn't want to shell out $200 for a ready-made enclosure, and liked the idea of fabricating my own. I got the itch to make one. In this first photo, you can see my current collection, scattered in a lower desk file cabinet. It's a rat's nest of cables, power supplies, a power strip, and a powered USB hub. I can't seem to find anything. Not a great way to store them, but that's all about to change. Here in the second photo are the results of this project, and it checks all the boxes. It mounts them in a container that's easy for transport, condenses the space that they take up, organizes the wiring for replacement for troubleshooting, and locates all the controls and inputs at a centralized location. Now let's go ahead and break it down into the following steps. Here's some photos of the build. Here's the can itself. And then, of course, drilling holes for the fans in the box and the lid. And I used a 4-inch hole saw for that. I found an old light diffuser for a ceiling light and thought it would make a great vent. So I masked it off, cut it into pieces, and then fit it into the side vents that I had cut. And I used a metal cutting wheel to cut out the vents on the sides. It was important to add these vents on both sides and the bottom for adequate airflow, otherwise the drives would heat up. Let's talk about the fans for a moment. Putting fans into a small metal box is critical for proper airflow to cool the drives down. So I had to put one in the very front of the box, and also the only other logical place would have been to put one in the lid. These particular fans are two full-size PC case fans that run at medium speed. I didn't want high-speed fans unless necessary due to the excess noise factor. These worked out fine. The front fan pulls cool air in and the top fan exhausts hot air out. It's time to paint this beast. I painted the fan blades a light gray acrylic, fan grills and drive support brackets black, the screen camo green with a coat of gloss varnish, and the case got camo desert tan with a clear coat of varnish. It's time to mount the components inside the case. I started with the lid fan just inside the lip of the lid and it has a quick connect plug in case I need to remove it. Next came the screens and they're mounted with hot glue but in case they come apart later I can use epoxy. And last but not least the front panel. Here's a shot of the front panel with a female 110 volt AC recess plug on the left, a double-ended female USB 3 plug in the center, and an on off switch on the right hand side. I'll have a link in the description for all the parts that I used. Let's talk about power for a moment, specifically the USB connections. In order to get the drives connected and working in such a small space, I searched for some short SATA to USB 3.0 adapters and found these on eBay. There's a link below. I also needed a four port USB 3.0 hub that was slim enough to fit between the hard drives and the side of the case. I used a Sabrent 4 port powered three USB 3.0 hub from Amazon in the link below. I had to make sure that these USB adapters and the hub would fit around the drives and still fit in the, in the box itself. It took quite a bit of fiddling, but I got to fit with ample airspace between the drives. Now let's talk about the power for the drives. I initially thought of using an old PC power supply I had laying around, but after testing it, I found out it was toast. So time to move on to plan B. Using the existing power supplies that came with the drives, the plan was to nix the plastic cases, zip tie the circuit boards to a piece of thin wood, re-solder the leads with new ones, and mount the board inside the box. Lots of shrink tubing here. And one of the most time consuming parts of the project, however, it did work out very well. And now the real heart of the project, which is the stacking of the drives. I've included several shots here from different angles so you can see the detail. The drives are stacked with about a half of inch of space between each one. I reused the metal from the screen cutouts and drilled mounting holes as side brackets. The SATA adapters are mounted on the front of the drives. Their wires wrapped around the external part of the drive, then plugged into the 4 port USB hub. The power cords for each drive and the hub feed back through the gaps of each of the drives and are taped to the drives and brackets to reduce air interference. They have quick connect connectors so the drive can be modified or removed from the box. Well, here she is, the final project. Everything fits and it's all in there. It even has a handle. I tested all the components prior to firing it up. It's too much of a risk to just plug it in and hit the switch. Everything works and the PC recognizes all the drives. Airflow is good with no appreciable increase of heat due to the dual fans 
and air screened on three sides. The noise level is low, just a little more than when the dryers were piled up in a filing cabinet. In conclusion, this is one of the most challenging ones I've attempted and very satisfying. It took a while for planning, building, ordering parts, but I'm not in a hurry. I'm glad to see it complete. If you are considering trying this, make sure you take the time to plan and test everything to ensure a positive result. Good luck with yours and thanks for stopping by.